So in this video, let's talk about if you should consider buying the Dwarf 3, which I currently have, or the Dwarf Mini, which I currently have on order, and which one is ideal for you. Quick disclosure, Dwarf Labs did send me this Dwarf 3 to test out, review, and make videos about, and also they've made a special compensation for me for the Dwarf Mini, because currently the Dwarf Mini is only available in select countries. This is likely because when they rolled out the Dwarf 3, it was such a hot product, they literally got backordered for months and months and months. And this time they want to be able to release the Mini and have it where it's available in the countries that they can deliver it to, and they'll roll out their shipping options across the world as they have more and more stock. So if you are thinking of getting a Dwarf Mini, uh, definitely consider clicking my affiliate link below. And if you are considering getting a Dwarf 3, well, also click my affiliate link below, but you know, you might have a bit of time to think about it, especially if you want it before any particular holiday or birthday celebration. So let's get into reviewing the specs and I do have some photos I'm gonna be showing to you. I will have them properly credited, but they've been provided to me by Dwarf Labs from the early reviewers to show you sort of what the Dwarf Mini can do. And I'll compare that with some of the content I have from the Dwarf 3. So let's get into it. Which brings us to the technical comparison between the Dwarf 3 and the Dwarf Mini. First of all, the Dwarf Mini is about $150 less. It also is just a little over half the weight. Now, one downside is that it's a 30 millimeter optics rather than 35, and that it's a field of view is a little bit more narrow than the Dwarf 3 in terms of the telephoto lens. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, if we scroll down here, it means that we get a slightly tighter field of view in terms of how much of the night sky we see. Now, I will bring up pictures in a few seconds to cover this, but basically it comes out to being that the Dwarf Mini actually has a narrower view of the sky than the Dwarf 3. There's some pros and cons to that, which I will discuss, but overall, that's the optical side of it there. It's slightly smaller, but it also has a narrower field of view to adjust for that smaller optics. Now, here's the interesting part. The Dwarf 3 has 340 by 340, which means it can't actually do a full 360 rotation, whereas the Dwarf Mini can do a 360 rotation, which has some positives in terms of when you're getting to, say, tracking or if you're trying to like image something through the night sky, you're not overly worried about hitting that 340 degrees. It'll just keep going. So that's good. And again, if we look at the optics, we're seeing that the Dwarf Mini has a really good IMX662 chip, but it is 1 over 2.8 inches, whereas the Dwarf 3 has an IMX678 chip. It's a larger chip. It's a 4K chip, as we're going to see right here. It is a bit bigger chip. So you end up having it where the Dwarf Mini is, again, 1920 by 1080p, whereas the Dwarf 3 is a 4K scope. So Again, this is not the end of the world, but just something to keep in mind. Also, the Dwarf Mini, and this is something I like, it has a dark shutter. Now, what this means is that you can do dark frames in camera automatically whenever you whenever you want to. And in theory, this means it could also um, do dark frames as it's taking pictures. So it could take a dark frame every, say, minute or th five minutes, and then that could be applied to uh, images as it goes. Whereas with the Dwarf 3, you actually have to put that solar filter on it and do all the stuff. I have a video, which I'll have a link at the end of the video for, where it you know, can be used to do dark images, but ideally, you know, actually having a dark shutter in there makes a lot of sense. Um, and then again, you have dual band and astro filters, um, so you can image pretty much anything in the night sky. And again, you have the typical photo, video, astro burst, astro burst, and time lapse in both cameras. And then, yeah you have this lovely thing telling you about it. And again, it's only $399, which is very affordable on a smart telescope. And which brings us here, which again covers sort of the main things that this Dwarf Mini can do. Now, we're gonna talk about mainly resolution and field of view, because those are the two I think that are gonna be a big deal for people deciding to buy. Do they want the higher resolution and slightly wider field of view, or are they happy with the narrower field of view and the slightly lower resolution, but in theoretically, you know, slightly bigger optical performance. So we're gonna start with an unfair comparison, and that is gonna be the Dwarf 3 taking an image of the Orion Nebula from last year. Now, I've actually gone through and used computer processing to improve the image, whereas nowadays you can use the 
updated stacking features in the app itself. But what we want to see here is the Dwarf Mini comparison of M42. Now, what you'll notice here is that there's definitely a framing difference. Now, the fact that it's slightly angled is because the person who took this image is in a different part of the world from me, and they probably took it at a different time of night and a different time of the year. But you can get an idea that there is a smaller framing with the Dwarf Mini. Now, this becomes an advantage for something like the sun because you actually want more resolution on the sun, so you want the sun to be a little bit more magnified. And you can see that here where the Dwarf Mini is actually a little bit bigger image than what comes out of the Dwarf 3. And even when I do process the Dwarf 3 to pull out a little bit of more resolution, you can kind of see that the Dwarf Mini does arguably a little bit better job. This also applies to lunar photos because obviously a little bit more magnification gives us additional detail. However, this becomes a bit of an issue when you're imaging some of the larger nebula in the night sky, such as this, the Hart Nebula. While this framing works pretty well, it's obvious that Richard didn't quite get the full nebula in the frame. And the Dwarf 3 does a bit better job, but even it doesn't quite get it. Something else I wanted to bring your attention to is that this is 105 minutes of Dwarf Mini imaging. And if I was to use a Dwarf 3, I would be able to do this with a lot less time. However, this is why side-by-side -side comparisons can be different. Here's another picture taken by Duncan Pond of the same nebula, and he's gone and spent over 245 minutes imaging it and both of these have been post-processes by their respective photographers to their liking. This example is done in Hubble Palette. And why this is important is because you can get really good images even out of the smaller telescope. And if you're willing to let it go for a night or two or three on the same target, particularly small targets like the Cocoon Nebula like this, you actually get some really good results with the Dwarf Mini. So something to consider when you're trying to decide between the two of them in terms of overall resolution versus the framing. So at the end of the day, should you consider buying a Dwarf 3 or get the Dwarf Mini? It basically comes down to who you are and what you're trying to achieve. Generally, I would say for most people, the Dwarf Mini is the smart telescope you want to go with. It's cheaper, it's smaller, and if you're buying it as a present to somebody who's never done astronomy before, it just makes sense to get them something that is going to be more portable and easier to use and will get good results quickly than going for something like this, which is designed with a lot of intermediate functions in it that require additional time to try out and use, etc., which is great. And I honestly think it's, it's perfect if you know somebody who's like really into astronomy should get one of these but for somebody who's like new user or something like this that smaller size and price tag it, it, it's hard to ignore and save your money for what we hope will be the dwarf for later or you could go full out like i did and get an observatory an eight inch telescope a german equatorial mount and all the fixings either option works out very well I'll leave it to you to decide and, you know, and if you're interested in what everyone else is thinking, I will post in the top comment below uh, what the sales of the Dwarf 3 to Dwarf Mini that I've seen on my affiliate links has been, and that'll give you hopefully an idea of which one you might want to consider purchasing. Until next time, here are two amazing videos. One of them YouTube thinks that you should watch, and the other one is possibly my latest video. You decide which one you want to watch next.